Good evening, everybody. How are you? Um, are you blessed? I'll, I'll tell you, I really am. Um, and uh, the reason um, I have changed my group page from the rest of the believers um, and non-believers um, to uh, taking evangelism by storm is because um, I am expanding so many um, ministers right on this group page even as I speak. In other words, I'm the first guy in this state um, who um, posts a lot of sermons um, taken from the past and or the present. Um, most of them are popular televangelists. The rest are televangelists who, pre who are the, mo the rest are not. They are actually evangelists of, who preach right here in this state um, with the various churches um, on which you can uh, apply um, in your personal life. And, I, and there is more to it uh, than just applying it to your life. Uh, you can also take individual notes um, and tell all your friends about what um, each of the message has said. That's all. But enough of that. I want to get on to the message entitled, um, How Can We Alleviate Our Anger? That's my subject. How can we alleviate our anger? And uh, between the... Ch now, as you might have noticed, I go to 242 Church um, in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and... Um, Pastor Maggie spoke about the subject um, in a way um, that it is true, uh, really. And, um, I just, and I just found out by happenstance of how to alleviate the anger is simply by singing praise and worship music. And how um, we can also um, try to release and alleviate all that anger is by restoration. You have to have the restoration of your life, or um, you wouldn't, um, or you wouldn't um, be back to your old self. But enough said. Let's get on with this, and um, and understanding why um, must we alleviate that anger? Well, it's one of the most valuable lessons of. Uh, we can learn in our everyday Christian life. Now, if you have your Bible or your Bible apps, won't you turn with me to Proverbs 15, 18? That counsels, a hot-tempered man stirs up strife, but he, it, but he who is slow to anger quiets contention. Taken from the ESV Bible. Now, I want you to also know that alleviating to anger is one of the attributes to God. Go to Psalms 145.8, and it says, The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. Now, the Bible has a lot to say about this subject that we remiss if we are not careful in many ways. Now, Another thing that I want you to notice is a hot-tempered man in Proverbs 15, 18, if you will, is obviously a man of wrath, such as a man who is quick-tempered uh, or easily enraged. But the man who is calm and, and, is, and has alleviated to anger is one who averts arguments and stops all that fighting. He is a natural peacemaker, the ability to quiet tension and live in harmony with others that is a priceless virtue. Now in Matthew 5, 9, Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. It's that simple. Now, another phrase meaning alleviating all the anger it, I mean, another word meaning alleviating all the anger is patience. In the New International Version, Proverbs 14, 29 says, 
Whoever is patient has great understanding, but one who is quick-tempered displays folly. Now, the English Standard Version uses slow to anger in replacement of patient. The New Living Translation states, and listen, people with understanding control their anger. A hot temper shows great foolishness. When we learn to control our emotions and curbs foolishness in a fit of anger, we indicate that we've gained potential yet greater understanding. Proverbs 16.32 uh, affirms, whoever is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he is who the rules have his spirit than he who takes the city. Over and over and over again, the Bible extols the benefits of cultivating patience and um, releases anger. Proverbs 19.11 says, good sense makes one slow to anger and it is his glory to overlook an offense now when we start to understand why we ought to alleviate all that anger we can begin practicing patience in our relationships say james taught believers not only to listen to god's word but to put it into practice now, in James 1, 19, 22, it says, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Consequently, get rid of all more filth and, and the evil that is so prevailing, and humble accept the word planted in you which can save you. Do not, and I repeat, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Now, a wise Christian is one who listens to God and obeys and who listens to others. Carefully consider what considers what he hears and then answers with cautiously chosen words. Okay. There's more. Human anger, James explains, is a waste of energy. It is motivated by selfishness and ambition and creates division among brothers and sisters in Christ. Anger cannot and will not produce the righteousness that God desires. Go to James 3.17. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, and good fruit, impartial, and sincere. Now, when we react in anger, we can cause injury. When we hold, in other words, or when we hold on to anger, we breed unforgiveness. However, gentleness and patience make room for healing and harmony in our relationships. Here are some scriptures you need to mark down Psalm 37 verses 8 through 9 and Proverbs 12 18. Now another proverb warns in the 29th of chapter of that verse in the 29th chapter of that scripture verses 11 says fools give full vent of their to their rage but the wise bring calm in the end. Now, in, if we want to show good sense, wisdom, and discretion in our lives, if we want to have common sense to everybody uh, who are around us, we have to learn how to alleviate all that anger and practice patience in our dealings with everybody to the ones who are surrounded us bottom line the bible un, unambiguously warns us to be rid of ourselves with anger and rage and to be nice gracious and compassionate to each and 
everybody. Ephesians 4, verses 31 to 32 and Colossians 3, 8. Oh, and this is the second to last one. So please, I'm going to still have you to listen in on what it says. Write that, take your notes down, write it word by word and try to understand. Psalm 86, 15 confirms, but you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. It is the Lord's patience, his slowness to anger. He alle alleviates all the anger that allows us to come to salvation. Numbers 14 through 18, Joel 2, 13. We ought to always be aware and grateful for the Lord's gracious and compassionate patience. For without it, we would have not been saved. Second Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anybody to perish, but, every, but everyone to come to repentance. And finally, to close this, it is God's patience that delays Christ's second coming and the consummation of history. That's right. And it, it is his gracious compassion that holds back his wrath and keeps open the door for sinners to repent. The Lord's incredible patience and love for humankind allow those who haven't repented to have an opportunity to be saved. Not yet. God uses time and patience to serve his purpose for grace. And since our God has alleviated all this anger and abounding in grace towards us, can we, ought we not humiliate his character and how we treat others? So, between 242 and Bishop Kim Jones, whom I watch each and every day. Um, now, if everybody has been living um, in um, a very, very, very unhappy world, an angry world, as, is my, as was myself, uh, however, if you take the opportunity to uh, talk to God each day and uh, ask him to alleviate all this anger and all this frustration, then you'll be radically changed. And, and it isn't gonna be this easy. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort um, within days, hours, and weeks um, just to put every, just to get yourself together. And when you do, you will be, um, uh, you'll be one of the examples of uh, to minister to people, and you will do the same, and you will do the same thing, um, like to minister to those who have been in the same situation as you were, just being angry in hoping you can get them to alleviate all that anger, all that frustration that God, uh, that you have been doing, that they have been doing um, the same way um, when a Christian singer named David Meese um, had asked God to release all that anger and all that frustration um, only because um, he really did not want to hate his father. And that was how he had to, re to talk to God for releasing all the anger and all the frustration, um, all because he really did not have a good relationship with his father over the years before his parents were ever divorced. And that was a true story. And I hear it over and over and over again. Whenever I hear something, um, about um, what young David did. I mean, um, 
he really didn't want to talk about uh, what was going on after he lost his father um, in a gladly way. He just did not want to talk about that. All he wanted to do was to just move forward. And um, having, that, having said that, he earned a lot of respect um, musically and professionally um, for um, his recognition in Christian music. Having to release over 13 albums, writing songs all about uh, his own real life um, crises, um, growing up um, with an abusive father, not to mention he also sent the message to every Christian who loved listening to David Meese, just as I did. Well, thank you very much for listening, and um, I'll see you next week.